guys. How's it going, everybody? Uh, welcome to the Blade and Soul stream. Uh, my name is Jonathan Lin. I'm the associate producer of Blade and Soul. I'm Bethany Stout, the community manager. All right, and we're back. Yay, we're back. Uh, so <laughs> if you guys caught our stream last week about the Blue Lagoon patch, uh, we had some slight technical difficulties uh, with our video card going out on our stream machine. But as you can see, we're now back up and running. So we're going to do a basic recap of the, of the stuff, um, you know, maybe get the show off. A little, uh, everything a little bit more clearly yeah. since we have uh, um, our stream computers back. Yay! Okay. okay, so let's see. Where are we starting today? All right, yeah, so basically on today's stream, uh, as we did last week, we're going to do a couple quick updates, mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to talk about Beluga Lagoon, our new 66 Battleground, and then we're going to talk about some of the other changes in the patch and our Halloween event. Yep, yeah. sounds good. So we'll just jump into the quick updates, and that is one thing that you guys have been asking for the moment they were released is why can't we summon our pets and why why is there a timer whenever we summon our pets? We just want to have them up all the time and <laughs> we are removing pet nips so that you can have your friendly pal next to you all time, all the time. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to feed them anymore because, I don't know, they sustain on, uh, I don't know. Which <laughs> they, whatever's in there. Yeah, they eat whatever's in their little pokeball, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so basically, um, you're not going to need to eat pet, uh, use PetNip anymore mm -hmm. to keep your pet active. They'll always be active, and any sort of existing PetNip uh, will be able to be redeemed for one Frozen Stinger and two Soul Stones through the Antiques window. Uh, on top of that, as you can see on our website, uh, th this, web this page is actually live right now, so you can check it out. Yeah. Um, all of these items under this list are going to be changed to account bound instead of character bound, and you'll be able to mail them to your alternate characters. Uh, for the prices that you see there. That's also from your guys' feedback because you wanted specific things to be able to level your alts easier. So we are helping you out with your alts as well as your pets. So hopefully that's a good change for you guys. I yeah. know I'm enjoying it because now I can have my cute little otter next to me all the time. <laughs> there are two things. One, some people are saying they're, they sustain by love and the others are saying they're cheap. <laughs> A little oh bit goodness. of both. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The next update we have is our pumpkin carving contest is still going. And if you want to submit your pumpkin carving or your pumpkin drawing, um, submit them before October 27th at 12, or 11.59 p.m. And you can win a new 2016 costume, Halloween costume called Graveheart, as well as the white horse mask. It'll be the only time to get the white horse mask currently. So if you really want to spook out your friends by having your horse head, then um, please send me your pumpkins because they're exciting. So we've received so many already, so hopefully just keep sending them in. Send them in. And then maybe you'll win the 8,000 grand prize of 8,000 end coin across all games. So that'll be cool. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah, definitely get those in <laughs> October 27th by midnight, so make sure you get them in. Um, lastly, we had our Rumble in the Realm Grand Final Yay. Uh, last week. That was we, so fun. Yeah, sorry. We, I'm going to no, cut you off. I'm sorry. No, I'm going to let you do it. I'm saying we, no, cast no, no, it no, we casted it last Friday. So, um, uh, yeah, the lovely Bethany and Maggie had us casting. And also thanks uh, so much to Imperial and Legion for mm -hmm. having a like, great broadcast, great casting. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to announce the winners. They did a great job. Yeah. Thank you again to our two community tournaments that helped us organize all of this. And we were able to sponsor them. So thank you so much, Imperial and Legion. And um, for the winners, so if you weren't watching, the winners for EU, first place was Tenna, second place Ryuki, third place Sarpo, and fourth place Rat Eyes. Good job, guys. You guys battled it out so, so hardcore. It was very exciting to watch. And everybody was super hyped in both Twitch channels. And lastly, NA was first place De Beers. De Beers, not Beers. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cassius took second, Solarin third, and fourth Vestea. So if you want to take a look at our awesome, um, I think Maggie, you have the nice little, do you have that maybe? The, oh, the, bracket. the brackets. Oh, it's on the other one. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, if you want to see the brackets, we, they're up on Legion and Imperial, if you want to see how it all went down. Um, and that's... That's the rumble in the realm for this, like, do you guys want a, a second one? If you want a second one, we would love to see what your guys' feedback is, and we would like to do another if you guys would like that. So let me know if you want a second rumble in the realm, and maybe yeah. we can work that out. I know, yeah, I know we definitely would like to do more. Um, you know, I mentioned on the earlier stream today that, you know, we had a bunch of us, yeah. you know, huddled around the computers, watching it, sharing people on. So really, really a great play by everybody, really high-level play. So yeah. thank you very much for everyone who participated and watched and helped us run it, because it was a, it, it was a large... It was a large effort to get everything together. A great effort. Um, 
also, next update, um, would, we're going to jump straight into their Beluga Lagoon. So we can jump to Jonathan's screen and he can show us what's going to be happening, the main content for Beluga Lagoon. Yeah, so uh, Beluga Lagoon is our, is our brand new 6v6 Battleground. Uh, this is going to be really similar in uh, kind of to Whirlwind Valley. Uh, it's a 66 battleground. Uh, it is not gear equalized. Uh, you get the same currency for, for participating in it, the battle points. Um, so uh, I'm in there right now. I'm hanging out. Um, unfortunately, um, it requires 12 players to play, and I'm all by myself. So um, just to give you guys a little, little hint of the zone and kind of what it looks like. Um, it's, it's, it's really beautiful. It looks a lot like the Half Moon Lake over by the Fish Network Guild in Moonwater Plains. Um, so and also, we've actually put up, I believe, the, the preview for Blue Lagoon on our website. Um, so basically, um, just to give you kind of an idea of how it works, uh, right now I'm on the blue side and there's also the red side on over here, obviously. Uh, and you can see that each side has three whale statues. Now what you want to do is there is a horn in the middle that kind of acts like a capture the flag. Uh, so you'll have one of your teammates pick it up and basically you'll want to escort it back to one of your whale statues and activate it. Uh, and that will give you passive points um, while it's active. So it's kind of like Roland Valley, you're ticking up to 1800 points um, while you're also getting kills to get points, kill streaks, etc. Um, every time, every second that goes by or every few seconds goes by, you'll gain points based on how many statues you've captured by bringing the horn back. Um, it's also a little bit different um, when you do have the horn, you, have, you don't have access to all your skills. You have access to a couple skills that are only available to the person currently holding the horn and um, you'll have to basically defend them, escort them, and they'll have a limited amount of, um, you know, basically moves that they have access to so that they can, um, so, so it's, it's, it's you, you're immediately kind of like a person down, but you gotta escort them back to, to capture it. So um, basically the dynamic goes back and forth like that. Like I said, really similar to Roland Valley. Um, you access it the same way, you go in F8, and you uh, go to the Battleground tab in the top right, and that's gonna get you into, World, uh, sorry, Beluga Lagoon. Um, I have a question about if the quests are um, separated from Whirlwind Valley as well. Yes, so Whirlwind Valley and Beluga Lagoon are going to have their own separate sets of quests. I can actually show them in a second. And also, um, you'll see in right here, Beluga Lagoon uh, has its own ranking system with its own weekly and seasonal rewards. Um, it's separate from Whirlwind Valley. Um, so this is obviously on our QA servers. Yeah. It says <laughs> test season because uh, we're testing it. Um, so let me just show... Yeah, you can see right here, you have your three win weekly uh, quests, um, which gives you three of the new galaxy fragments, which we'll talk about a little bit in a second. Um, you're going to have your daily, which you can choose a galaxy fragment or a, a bravery as your final reward. And lastly, the participate in three matches once, which does not give you a storm fragment, but you do get the uh, reward chest. So those are the three quests for it. It's really similar to Woe and Valor. You have your participate in three, win one, and your uh, weekly three win quest. All right, so um, that's kind of how Beluga Lagoon works. Um, yeah. nice. I like that it's different, that you have to go to different statues instead of the cauldrons. Right, it basically mixes up the gameplay a yeah. little bit. It's still the same like base, base yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of gameplay, but it just mixes it up a little bit, keeps it fresh. Um, but probably what you guys want to see is the rewards from it. Oh, so I'm sure going to go talk <laughs> to the Battleground Trader here. And uh, the first thing that we're going to talk about is Legendary Soul Shields. So Legendary Soul Shields are going to be available for the first time um, in, in Bladensville ever um, with this patch. And you'll be able to see uh, on the second tab here of the Battleground Trader NPC. And this is this, you know, there's one, it's the same thing for Roland Valley and there's just one 66 NPC. Um, really, really quick. Um, it's also going to be the first time that Hell Soul Shield is going to be available um, officially. Um, so it's going to be available from the vendor for 1,000 battle points and one bravery, and this is like a, a, a really good PvP soul shield. Um, you know, it's, it's 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 definitely on the same level as like you know Noxune or sparring or challenger, like the ones that you, like you can definitely use these and and be competitive in 6v6. Um, and then we have of course the legendary soul shields. Now um, they're in a chest like this because uh, a really cool thing about legendary soul shields is there is. Each class has its own set of soul shields. So when I open this chest, I will get, like right now I'm playing Destroyer, I will get the Elder Destroyer soul shield, which I have a bunch of in my inventory. Those set effects. Yes. Um, and you'll see, yeah, the set effects are um, 
They're class specific, so you can see they, this one affects my pile driver, which is um, your, my F ability after you launch them into the air. Um, and uh, it's, it's really similar for all the classes. Um, Bethany's got the, the, the summoner soul shields, if you guys want to check those out. Um, you can see that power pounce is specifically enhanced by this set of soul shields. And you can see the... Uh, got my back step. Yeah, got a back step. Escape from people trying to kill me. Things like that. I, yeah, it's cool to have the power pounce cooldown just decrease that much as well. So again, just keep pinning you guys, and then you guys can yell at me and say <laughs> I hate summoners, and I can just giggle the whole time. So, <laughs> so yeah. Um, another cool thing that's brand new to these soul shields, let's see, is that you can upgrade them in a different fashion. So, what you need to do to um, to fuse or reinforce the soul shield is that to upgrade the stats you put in, you have to get more of the same type of soul shield. So soul shield one needs to have its elder summoner soul shield one to be able to use. And this will help you progress um, exponentially. You just can max it out just by getting more and more instead of having to hope that you get the best stats. So you'd want to start off first with your best soul shield that you get. So we can start off with this one. Oh, it looks like I maxed out. So we'll still start off with this one and we'll just keep evolving it. And then you just slowly try to get your maxed out soul shields. So your galaxy fragments, you just keep buying those soul shields to upgrade. And look at my crit defense is already maxed with the one other soul shield. So I, I, it's really cool that you don't have to base and hope for the random gods to give you the soul shields. You can just continue to work your way up to get the stats that you want. Yeah, exactly. And uh, one of the one of the purposes of this system was, you know, a lot of the times um, with the older social system, um, you're basically looking for that one in twenty seven chance that you get max stats. The, the the secondary stat you want, as well as max values on the primary and secondary stats. What this allows you to do is this changes up the dynamic a little bit. Uh, when you do first and seal a soul shield, which costs five ensealing charms. Um, Two of the statistics are static, and they're the, your primary statistics, and then it'll, it'll roll one of three substats, and then based on that, you can, you can upgrade them. You can, you can see Bethany doing it right there, adding HP to her soul shield. So eventually, uh, you, you get enough of the same piece, you'll be able to max out your soul shields to the max stats. Um, you know, even if you get one where the, you don't like the substat you rolled, you can just feed that into the one with the substat you want, yeah. and it'll, it, you'll, you'll be able to, to basically max out your soul shields as you collect more and more. Um, so uh, going back to how to how to obtain them um, on the second tab of the Battleground Trader NPC. Um, you'll see that they're purchasable for the Galaxy Fragments. So you saw those earlier, some of the quest rewards for the daily and weekly quests. They're also purchasable for 250 battle points right here. Um, and we'll also be, they'll also be available through other stuff. We'll have them available through events. Uh, there's going to be one on the new Daily Dash, which also starts on uh, the 26th. Um, so, and then <coughs> you're able to purchase them from this tab. Now you'll notice that the first three Pieces of Soul Shield uh, do not require any sort of achievements. The four through eight do. Uh, pieces four and five will require the 10 win whirlwind battleground. Uh, I haven't done it on this character, so I cannot purchase them currently. And then six through eight require the 100 wins. Um, this is for specifically the whirlwind achievement. Uh, Beluga Lagoon wins do not count towards this achievement. So yeah, that's pretty much. Uh, oh yeah, and one last thing about that. Um, while we, we do have this new reinforcement system, as you can see, and upgrade them, you can still that does not replace the fusion system, so you can still use, for example, if you want more critical defense, you know, maybe more piercing on your PvP soul shield, you can still fuse a uh, primer. Um, you're gonna probably want to use, uh, you know, master rick primers um, or stuff like that for these legendary soul shields in order to get the highest rolls. And uh, so you, you can you can both reinforce them to max and fuse them with uh, the stat of your choosing. So. Um, this new upgrade system is only for legendary soul shields. It's not going to replace any of the current heroic soul shields or anything like that. Uh, future legendary soul shields will also use this system. Um, one more item, one more thing that's kind of changing with soul shields is uh, fusing itself. Um, so starting with the new patch on next Wednesday, um, if we haven't mentioned them that, the Luga Luga is coming out <laughs> next Wednesday on October 26th. But um, you're no longer able to use soul shields to, uh, regular soul shields to fuse, you can only use primers. Um, there's also going to be an NPC added to the game that sells basic, like, green primers. So if uh, you're just trying to get some basic ones, or maybe not, you know, the ones that you want to max out, it's going to be easy to get those primers for a, a small price. That's, 
That's a lot of information just for Soul Shields. <laughs> it's just, it's a really neat new new way to do the Soul Shields in yeah. the game. So it's really cool to have. I like that. Yeah, it's and cool. that's one of the reasons why we wanted to redo the stream so yeah. you guys would have. <laughs> be able to have a, a watchable video so you guys can get this information. We can post it up on YouTube and have the VOD on Twitch and everything. So, yes. <laughs> so much info. Yes. Um, secondly, uh, so the second new thing, mm -hmm. and this is even more exciting for me, uh, is going to be legendary weapons. And, um, you know, we obviously introduced the BFL and the Seraf weapons uh, quite a while ago. This is going to be the first non-main path legendary weapon available. Um, Obviously, your Baleful and Seraph weapon upgrades from your true Scorpio weapons, but this is going to be a standalone weapon, and it's called the Galaxy weapon. So, uh, same merchant, actually. Um, you can see the first item available on here is the Unrefined Galaxy weapon chest, and it costs 40 Galaxy fragments, 50 Honorary ornaments, and 100 Frozen stingers. Um, yeah, I'll just buy it. Yeah. You're rich. Um, yeah, and then this is actually what's already inside it. I already have one, but I'll just open it. Um, that'll, that'll pick you up the Galaxy X, and uh, from there, when you upgrade it, see, at first you don't get, you pretty much don't get any of the cool procs, any of the, any procs at all, actually, so um, you definitely want to be upgrading as quickly as possible, mm -hmm. um, which costs Frozen Stingers, Honoring Ornaments, Silver Frost, Transformation Stones, Legendary Elements, and Galaxy Fragments. And I think Bethany's is fully upgraded if you want to show hers. Um, it, can de it definitely gets, you know, more and more procs as you upgrade it. Um, so you can check out hers. You can see now it's got a whole bunch of effects on there. Yep, stage three will be the max for re the launch of this weapon. So just so you guys know. And yeah, look at all of those procs. It even has its own galaxy effect that triggers. Yes, really, really powerful effect. And uh, there's even more uh, effects that can be unlocked in later stages. But as Bethany mentioned, it will be limited to stage three until further content is released. Um, so this is a, it's definitely comparable in power to Baleful and Seraph, but it, it's focused on PvP. Um, so, you know, basically this is a very, very PvP-centric pa patch. We're obviously releasing new 66 PvP, new PvP soul shields, new PvP weapons. So basically you do PvP, you earn the currency of PvP, you use it to buy PvP items, and it'll enhance your PvP experience. Um, so just to, just to give you an idea of the different flows, you know, we obviously have um, our, our PVE paths and our PVP uh, PVE paths and our PVP updates, which are going to introduce more content for that. So, yes, that is the new legendary weapon. It's called Thank Galaxy, you. and it's it's pretty. And I think Bethany's going to go through and show you guys all of them. We didn't on last week's stream, so this is this is a bonus for this yeah. week's stream. We didn't show them all last time, so these are the uh, the new Galaxy weapons. Sword and Lin Blade and the axe that Jonathan showed. Dagger and the razor, the bangle and the bracer. So yeah, that's very shiny. The gauntlet and yep. the bracer, sorry. Very flashy. Not bangle. Yeah, super flashy. So if you want your gold weapon, then you need to get this galaxy weapon. Yeah, that's what they look like. So now you guys know. <laughs> Yeah, I saw a question about where to get legendary elements from. Uh, it's the same thing as legendary jewels. You can purchase them from the Dragon Express for 20 gold. Um, so you can get it right out of the right out of inventory. Um, we'll also have other ways to get them in the future, like just like legendary jewels. You can get them through Trial Arena, and um, you know we'll have we'll, we'll, we'll there'll be more ways to get them in the future. So that basically covers uh, the new content. You know, sorry we couldn't show off the actual gameplay, but. Um, it's, it's, it's definitely really, really fun. It's fast paced, just like rolling value, you're running around, just, you know, you have your infinite sprint meter, you're just running, jumping around, and then getting into all kinds of battles. Um, I think Maggie's got a couple screenshots to show you guys right here. Um, this is basically uh, uh, Blue Lagoon. So green and waterfalls. And I saw a question about uh, gem slots for the Galaxy weapon. They're going to work just the same way as Baleful and Seraph uh, when you first get it, it's going to roll anything anywhere from three to six slots and will re-roll. Uh, it can roll more slots every time you upgrade it. It cannot decrease in slots, so it can only go up. Um, and you will need legendary gem hammers, uh, not regular gem hammers. And it will require the same amount as Baleful and Seraph, which is, I believe, 7, 15, and 22, respectively, for the last three slots. 
So yeah, you can ju you just saw the the character there in the in the skull after holding the horn. That's basically what you want to capture and bring back to your white whale statue. You can see one at the bottom of the screen there, right there as well. Uh, that's you know been captured by a blue team. Um, so that will basically get you points. Keep take uh, keep ticking along as you kill each other some more. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> All right, so that, that pretty much covers um, some of our new gear, um, but that's just, you know, that's, that's obviously the biggest part of the patch, but there's also a ton of other changes coming in the patch. Um, so we're going to talk about a few of the things uh, that, that the, the Blue Glue Game patch is going to bring with us next Wednesday. Um, so. All right, this one is a big one. You should show it. All right. I'll let you I'll... show this one, because this one's juicy. All right, so <laughs> one of the things that we added to the game uh, is you can see right here in the bottom right of your screen. At the, uh, you can press here or you can press Control I to open it. And these are our new equipment upgrades paths window. And basically what this is gonna have is, a, is just in client, basically shows you your entire weapon tree um, and accessory tree. Um, so basically you can see you know, when, we had, when we had you know quite a lot of different paths here, when you can go true siren or true pirate uh, to true oathbreaker, etc. You're able to see um, what you need to do each upgrade. So you can see if I want to do from True Siren to Earthbreaker, I would, you know, get this chromatic axe from those particular quests. Uh, it, has, it has the gold cost, it has the, uh, it has the materials cost, and you can check that all out. Um, you can see the whole tree. You can see the alternate trees on the right. You can see, for example, this is the PvP upgrade path where you can upgrade your galaxy weapon, and this is going to be your PvE path. Um, so this is brand new um, in the client. Um, it's really awesome. Um, and one of the cooler things you can do as well as on the left is you can say, okay, well, if I have, for example, an awakened breeze weapon, you know, I'm, I'm stage 10 or whatever, um, it's right there, and I want to get all the way to awakened Scorpio, stage one, and I'm trying to plan on my upgrades here, um, stage one, then you can see, basically, here's the path to do it. Uh, here's, if you have multiple paths and options, it'll give you both options and it'll give you the total cost, uh, material cost and gold cost all added together and tell you where to get every item along the way. That is beautiful. Yeah, so this is all in client. Amazing. Yeah. I know a lot of people oh have gosh. built, you know, spreadsheets and stuff and, yeah. you know, those have been really helpful. You know, I've definitely used them myself, mm -hmm. you know, when I was learning the game. Um, so this is, we basically, you know, talked to the dev team and said, you know, some players get confused or it'd be really helpful to have some games. So they said, yeah, you know, we, we, we want to design this and uh, we put this in the, put it in the client. So it'll be, it'll be available next Wednesday. You can also see that you can view the tree for each different class. If I wanted to view Kung Fu Master or a Blade Dancer, I'm able to view their weapon paths um, as well as view um, upgrade paths for accessories. So right now, obviously, um, you know, there's just one weapon. There's basically just one path for accessories and stuff. But you know, in the future, if it's, po it's possible we have multiple paths. We'll have them displayed in there, and um, it's really, really uh, accessible so from right in the client. You can see, like, this is where I am right now. I have Hong Energy Stage One. It's it's lit up, and you can find your upgrades. That, I'm, this is definitely one of the features that I've been really excited for, and also it's helpful for d to new players as well. So hopefully, this will be helpful for you guys to not have to just try to search where your stuff's at, do Google, do all these different spreadsheets, and so yep. I want you to stay in the client to figure this information out. So hopefully you guys do enjoy this one. <laughs> yep. I want my Scorpio, and my Scorpio's <laughs> gonna be telling me where my Scorpio's at and what <laughs> I'm gonna do next, and I'm like, all right, Seraph, no, I'm baleful. I want baleful. You're mine. Baleful. <laughs> Yeah. Man, that's just one thing. Okay, so yeah, let's go to the next more. one. Whew. All right, so we start off with that big, gigantic one, and this next one has been an issue that you guys have been letting us know about, and that is that you can't resurrect in Tower of Infinity and the Trial Arena. That's being fixed this Wednesday, so hold on. You're almost there. Soon you can resurrect again, so thank you for your feedback, and yeah, you will be able to resurrect once again without all the troubles that it's currently causing. We're sorry that you've had to deal with it for this long. Yeah, and we mentioned this as on last stream stream as well. Obviously, it was a, a pretty annoying bug, but um, mm -hmm. obviously with the release of this patch being only three weeks after our last patch, we were already working on this patch before the last patch even launched. So um, that was basically our decision on you know, whether to hotfix the bug or not. If this yeah. patch was farther out, then we definitely would have put a hotfix in for that because we yeah. do know that it was an annoying issue. Very. It's, yeah. yeah, just a little. <laughs>
Um, so another change that's coming up on this build is um, we've gotten a lot of feedback about uh, how it's a little bit more difficult for melee characters in Soulstone Plains uh, versus ranged characters just because you know, you know, melee characters have to do a little bit more dodging, they have to watch out for some of the AoE abilities, um, and especially if the mobs are moving around. Uh, so what we're going to do to Soulstone Plains is the attack patterns for uh, unbound mobs, so like the big ogres and the big elites Those and stuff guys. like that. Um, their attack patterns have become a little bit more predictable and less punishing for melee characters. Good. So basically just kind of even the playing ground a little bit. Um, once again, this is another change that was made based on feedback mm -hmm. from players uh, as well as from us. And so we're, we're just looking to even that, even it up a little bit. All right, the next, the next change we're also having is we are reducing the health and damage for the monsters in Twisted Grimhorn Wilds so that it's easier to solo. So since there's less people around to help you out, it's to help you guys solo so that you can do your dailies or your objectives or whatever you want to do. Just be sure to watch the big monsters patrolling because they have not been changed. <laughs> they will still, will still kill you, so be careful of those, but this should hopefully help you guys out. Yeah, some of the some of the more more annoying monsters to tackle in like smaller groups or solo. Mm -hmm. um, it's 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 as, as obviously it becomes older content. There's yep. smaller groups doing it, so we wanted to make it smooth for those players. Um, next up, uh, another change that we're making to the game is uh, remo removing brands from the game. So there's currently two in the game, and those are uh, Asura's brand from the first and fourth bosses in Sogun's Lament, as well as the Phantom brand from Everdrake Citadel. Uh, so previously, previous to this patch, you required a certain level of belt or bracelet to become immune from the effects of these brands. Um, so we're basically just going to take them out of the game. Um, they're kind of like an older system that, um, you know, just just really just added an, an extra step to worry about. And really, yeah. we just want players to be in there and be able to do their dungeons and everything. So we're removing them from the game. Uh, there's also items such as like Hongmoon Imperial Wine that give you the uh, the resistance to a Sir's brand. Uh, those are going to be obviously not useful anymore, so you're able to trade them in through the Antiques menu for Heroic Friendship Charms. Alright, next from there, this one is a nice one as well. It's very little, minimal, you guys probably don't even recognize it anymore, but we're going to be removing the unsocketing cost for gems. So this should help those who are just starting out and they want to unsocket their gems, but they have to pay you know, a price that actually matters at that time. It's just a copper to us, but for new players that's actually a lot of grinding. So. We're removing that to help you guys, so now you can do your achievement for unsocket and having gems <laughs> faster, so hopefully that'll help you guys out as well. Yeah. Um, another cool change that was, that's going in this patch is, uh, I think you could I think my character had on earlier, but the max camera distance um, in the options that you can set is going to be increased from 400 to 800, so as you can see, if you want to check out on my screen, uh, before it was 400 or so, so close enough. Okay. <laughs> So the max was about this far, um, and so in order to, uh, we've actually increased that to 800 in the new patch, so you can see the new max will look more like this. So it'll give you a lot larger uh, field of view here, and you're able to, to see a lot more of what's going on, and especially, you know, sometimes you get in those really cl close quarter battles and you, you, your camera kind of gets real, real close. Yeah. Uh, this one's going to be able to keep it out here at 800, um, so you get a really large view out here. Yeah, it's good definitely. For too. <laughs> yes, definitely increasing my 800 on day one of the patch. Yay. That's one that I've been wanting. I always want my, my camera way zoomed out, so <laughs> Maggie spider webs. Yes, there's, there's <laughs> a, we're getting caught on the spider webs a little bit here. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so the next one is we're reducing the PVP cost for skills. The PVP skills, sorry. Reducing the cost for PVP skills, and that will help those who, you know, to jump into the arena easier, or, you know, those who need their skills. It's been a little bit higher for some of those and it requires more grinding than they expected or wanted so this sh this will help out those who want to pvp more instead of pve so yeah so basically um what, what we're going to do is uh the home moon skills that are available from the zen bean trader the battleground trader and the premium membership tab on dragon express the overall cost is going to be reduced for all skills by roughly 30 percent um i'm going to show them on stream yeah. i know a lot of people asked for images last week or they didn't see them. Um, so I'm gonna go down. Here is the images for the premium membership. Um, so you can see uh, these are the ones uh, for training membership, sorry, training certificate and pugilist tokens. Um, so those come from Zen Beans. And then farther down, it's gonna be for uh, items you get from Whirlwind Valley. So that includes bravery and whirlwind tokens. 
So as you can see, these costs are, are very much reduced from uh, the last patch. So it's thir about 30% overall. Um, and they're also reduced on the trader, which I will show in just a second. So over here, um, you'll see that, the, the, that um, they've also been reduced on the trader itself. Um, one thing too that uh, I wanted to mention is uh, previously, for example, the offals were limited, uh, were gated by a 100 win achievement for Woolen Battleground. So that's been changed now to 10. Uh, these ones, the retrieved uh, Hongmin series techniques used to be 10, but now you just need one win. So if previously you needed 10, now you need one. Previously you needed 100, it's down to 10. So these ones I believe are all down from 10 to one. Uh, these four at the bottom are for 100 to 10. So hopefully this will make it a little bit easier for you guys to get your Hongmin skills through PVP. Um, you know, if you guys remember, we were the first region actually to offer these types of skills through PVP. And um, you know, we've over time, you know, we've looked at acquisition rates and people making alts and some people saying they're still too expensive or it's taking too long. So taking that feedback and uh, hopefully right now, hopefully at this point, it'll make it your Hongmin skills very obtainable because we know they are very, very important to PVP and PVE. So hopefully this will help you guys out. All right, next up is we have, um, there's going to be a battlefield rotation schedule and that is now live on the website. So um, we're gonna be changing things up. I'm gonna let Jonathan take this one over because he can explain this one to more details, but actually you can just look at the website as well. Um, yeah, so with the int uh, introduction of new 6v6 content, uh, there you have it right there. Um, we're gonna be putting the, the 6v6 um, battlegrounds will be available on a rotating schedule. So you'll see that Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, Beluga Lagoon will be available. Uh, on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, or when Valley will be available, and um, this is basically to keep players, you know, who you know, generally players who like 66 content is this, this the same group of players. So we want to keep them all focused on the same content on the same days. That therefore they'll be able to have uh, you know shorter queue times, shorter more players time, to play with, um, and hopefully everybody will be enjoying that content together. So this is how it's going to uh, obviously the, the patch is going to go live on a Wednesday, so it'll be Beluga Lagoon on that day. Um, and then also Battle Frenzy time is going to be from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. and that is server time. Uh, during that time you'll receive bonus experience and battle points from participating in those battlegrounds. Um, the second big change on here that you can see is Soulstone Plains. Um, you'll see that, uh, so currently right now in Soulstone Plains, uh, when you're in there, um, uh, you know, obviously everything's available at all times. Now starting with this new patch, uh, Soulstone Plains is going to have its own Battle Frenzy hours, which is between noon and midnight on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, the biggest change for that is uh, boxes uh, that drop chests that contain Moonstones are only going to be available during those Battle Frenzy hours. Now the, the chests, it's going to run still the same way, whether it's Battle Frenzy or not, it's just that the, the loot's going to be a little bit different. The boxes that drop in non-frenzy hours are going to be just the same, except they won't have any moonstones in them. Um, only during the battle frenzy hours will it happen there. So it's basically meant, once again, to concentrate uh, players in the area the same amount of time. They can get in there, have large like, groups duking it out, fighting for it. Um, and uh, so that's, that's, that's going to be one of the changes that goes live on Wednesday. The keys are fine, right? The Soulstone Plains keys? What's up? Oh, uh, show it. There's... Uh, yeah, there's, there's, um, you can see that there's Beluga Lagoon Battle Frenzy right here. Um, you can see, like for example, right now, if I were to go to the battlefield, battleground era, area in F8, there would be like only Beluga Lagoon available today. Well, that is also, we're also going to be, um, another change for PvP is that the rating for next season will depend on the last season. So if you scored 1,600 for the last season, it'll be, you'll be able to carry it over, right? Is that? Uh, it's, it's not carried over directly. It's, it's basically, yeah, like you're rating on a new season. So we're currently right now, you're reset at 1,300 on every single new season. What's gonna happen in the new season is you're going to, you know, start off a little bit higher uh, if you did well the last yeah. season. So if you, you know, maybe you're a diamond last season, it's gonna start you off, you know, higher than 1,300. Uh, therefore, the beginning of the season will be um, I think a little bit more friendly to everybody. It'll get pe mm -hmm. people back to where they belong faster. Yeah. Um, there'll be less uh, unbalanced matches in the beginning of the, of the season. And so basically, um, it's just gonna, it's gonna take your last season's rating into account when placing you in the new season. Kinda carried over. <laughs> All right, 
Then the next thing, that's basically it for all the, ma the major changes and fixes that we're doing. Um, next, we're also in this patch is going to be the Halloween event, the in-game Halloween event, and lots of new costumes. And as you can tell, the last store rotation had a whole bunch of fun costumes that I'm already seeing everybody wearing the creepy monkey mask and things like that. <laughs> but um, we're also going to be showing in the Halloween event, there's going to be certain bosses that are dressed up in costumes, so you'll be able to see them. Um, so you'll know that they're they're part of the Halloween event, as well as this NPC, the NPCs around the world will also be dressed up in the Halloween event um, outfits. As you can see, this lady, she's wearing the pumpkin, um, the pumpkin witch hat, where we can go just talk to her. She's wearing the witch o' lantern. I don't need to memorize these names, but um, so yeah, I'll have Jonathan explain how to get these jack-o'-lanterns and all of these goodness. Sure. Um, so basically, we're going to be posting the full event website um, really soon. Mm -hmm. But uh, basically, I should mention certain bosses are going to be dressed up. I don't want to, you know, spoil it too. It'll, it'll be on there, but you know, you'll be able to see some of your favorite bosses dressed up in the brand new 2016 uh, Halloween outfit, which is called uh, Graveheart, which we're going to show in just a second. Um, and basically, we're going to have a, we'll, we'll post a list of daily and dynamic quests that are going to reward you with pumpkin spice candy. Um, and then that's going to be used to uh, that's going to be used to obtain the event currency, which uh, Bethany can show you right now in the transmute menu. Um, I think I'm missing the pumpkin spice. Oh, candy I think I, I think I might have them. Okay. Um, so you'll so basically these pumpkin spice candies. If you go on my screen, yeah, uh, you're going to be able to get these from completing the specific daily and dynamic quests. For example, um, Desolate Tomb, uh, Heaven's Mandate, Black Rum Narrows, um, and and you're going to be able to transmute them. Uh, for a small fee, 10 silver, and you're going to transmute five of them at a time. And Look. I got five jack-o'-lanterns. Okay. And so that's the event currency. You also have a small chance to get a chilling chest, which I can show you right here, uh, which can give you some of the best uh, rewards in the events, like right away. You'll chance at them anyway. So you have a small chance when transmuting to receive chilling chests. Um, other than that, once you receive those jack-o'-lanterns, you can go, uh, sorry, in the event tab. Oh, I'm sorry, not in the event tab. <laughs> to, one, to one of the NPCs. There's no event tab anymore. Yeah, I, it's, it's I was NPC. too used to it. So it's going to be a couple yeah. of NPCs around the world dressed up in spooky areas. Yeah. Um, so those will also be posted on the, the website. The locations, and, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you'll be able to purchase any of those items that you can see on Bethany's screen right now. Yep, so there's um, some more fireworks. We haven't seen those since Valentine's Day, I believe. And I'll go ahead and show you what these outfits look like. So here's Spellcaster and with the hat. There's the new costume for the event. Switch over. It's kind of got a giant bow on the back with nice patterns. Of course, the uneven stockings because gotta be fashionable. We like always that. have to have the uneven stockings in Blade and Soul. <laughs> it is fashionable. I like uneven stockings. Uh, there's a question expect. about whether you can fail the transmute for pumpkin spice candy, and the answer is no, you cannot. That's good to know. Good question, guys. And last but not least, Lin Mail. So that's the new Spellcaster and Bewitched hat set. As well as you can get the new masks that this NPC is wearing. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's ridiculous. That was good. I love it. It's a giant, too. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so that's uh, the Witch of Lantern mask <laughs> and the uh, the Jack of Lantern mask. Oh, yeah, so these are all going to be available. Oh yeah, so this this Halloween event is supposed to run for three weeks, so it'll be live from October 26th until November 16th. And also, you can get the new Great Pumpkin weapon. And I'll show you what those look like for all characters. All right, so let's start with the axe. Yes, I need that. <laughs> it's quite amazing. Like the fork, trident, the dagger and the razor, <laughs> the staff on the broom, of course, it's going to be a witch's broom. I love the bat wings. The sword and the lin blade, pumpkins on a spike, <laughs> the gauntlet and the bracer. And last but not least, a green fancy bangle. So those are the weapon skins if you guys want some new weapon skins. 
relatively cheap on the merchant. Yeah, those ones are yeah. a little cheaper than the main costumes. Um, and also, as we mentioned earlier, a bunch of the NPCs are going to be wearing all, uh, some or all of the new 2016 costumes. So we also have that to show off for you guys, and it's called Graveheart. Show you Graveheart here. So this, these three, uh, the, it comes in a set of three with the mask and the pauldrons and the costume itself. It'll, it, this will be sold in a bundle on the Hongmoon store. Yeah, so this is brand This is brand new. This is this year's Halloween costume. Super cool. Very spooky. Got it's like she has blades on her arms. I just noticed that. It's like a bone blade. I really like the shoulders. The shoulders are pretty cool. It just looks so good on the male gone. Right. Jin male on the grave heart. And Lin male. <laughs> so that's the, the, Love it with the ears. The ears, yeah, slowly coming. Uh, so that's the new Graveheart outfit, as well as for us summoners with our cute little familiars. Of course, we need a cute little bat outfit to match with us. So cute. The creeper. Oh, the creeper. creeper. So clever. I love that. Whoever, whoever named it, good job. <laughs> <laughs> Zipper. So that's the new costumes for this year. Yeah, and just as a reminder, uh, we, we showed them off on last week's stream, but they're actually live already. We added a whole bunch of um, cool costumes to the game, um, I think these to are the live store games. on yeah on the tw on the twenty first. Uh, so we added stuff like Crimson Butterfly, yes. the Monkey Mask, yeah. Nevermore. So these are all available now in the in game, um, so you can get those. Uh. Uh, <laughs> we had to show the Monkey Mask. You just have to, but yeah, these are all available um, already in the store, so you can you can check them out in game. Um, but yeah, that's basically um, how the Halloween content is going to work. You can do your daily demo quest, get your pumpkin spice candies, transmute them for a chance at a chest, but usually get jack-o'-lanterns and turn them in for awesome cosmetics. You know, it's Halloween, so we had to, had, had to bring out a whole lot of costumes. Uh, Bethany, did you want to tell people how, to get the, how they could get a first chance at that white horse mask? <laughs> for the first chance, yeah. So currently, this mask is only available in the pumpkin carving contest. Um, so if you do want to spook out your friends, which is... <laughs> It's yeah, it's very spooky. Sorry, that's so, too funny. <laughs> just, if you want to, please send me your your pumpkin carvings before on the twenty seventh at eleven fifty nine. And so yeah, you can get this fancy mask. Yes, it oh will be the first chance. Okay, wait a sec. I just need to get rid of that outfit with this. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so I'm sure it'll be sold later. As you can tell, it matches your hair color. It's pretty the cool. The mane will match your hair color. So. That's a nice little touch that Jonathan pointed out to me that I never noticed. And so, yeah. Yeah, one of the questions that we get really often when we do like stuff like Halloween events is, uh, or events like this is, you know, how, how, how obtainable is it going to be to get like candies for all of those? Mm -hmm. um, you saw that like the list of stuff on the NPC. Uh, it's definitely, if you participate, you'll be able to get all of them by just normal play. Um, so don't worry too much about it as long as you participate. Um, there's also going to be all other ways to get the, um, the the candies. We'll be giving them out through the daily dash. Um, you know, some of them will be available in bundles and stuff like that. So, uh, don't worry too much. As long as you participate, you should be able to get all the cosmetics, no problem. That's good. All right. Yeah, you can see the, uh, the the costs on there on the screen there. If you want to take screenshots or stuff oh, yeah. like that, I know you guys Hurry. love doing that. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean that 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 basically sums up uh, the whole event, which we've affectionately named Blade and Ghoul. Blade and Ghoul. <laughs> Yes, um, so yeah, just to kind of recap, uh, Beluga Lagoon uh, is the name of the next patch. It comes out next Wednesday, or I'm sorry, this Wednesday, October 26th, um, so in two days. Um, new 66 Battleground, um, new legendary soul shields for every class, new legendary weapon, the galaxy weapon, uh, so P a lot of PvP updates. Tons um, of PvP updates. Battleground rotation schedule is a really big change. Uh, the new equipment upgrade paths, UI is a really big change. Uh, fixing that really annoying resurrect issue, <laughs> resurrect. Uh, making SSP or Soulstone planes less punishing for melee characters, increasing max camera distance. So lots, lots, lots of uh, mm -hmm. stuff went into this patch. So um, well, I, I know we're definitely really excited to get it out to you guys. Um, but yeah, only in two days. Yeah. So yeah, October 26th is the date for the patch. Um, I think that covers pretty much everything. Yeah. Um, Thank you again to Legion Imperial for Rumble yeah. in the Realm and making it such a great event and helping us and letting us participate with them. So thank you everybody who participated with the Rumble of the Realm. Yeah. 
Um, and pumpkin, pumpkin carving contest again. If you want horse head, do it. <laughs> yes. Thank you to, to Maggie and our IT team for getting our uh, stream machine fixed so quickly <laughs> and got, make sure we can get back on live for you guys. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that pretty much wraps up Beluga Lagoon. Um, as always, make sure you follow Blade and Soul on all our official channels on Twitter, Facebook, Twitch to so get all the latest updates. Um, if you have any extra questions, you can always hit us up on Twitter. You can mm -hmm. see me and Bethany's uh, Twitter, Twitter handles at the bottom of the screen there. So if any, we didn't get to your questions or anything like that, mm -hmm. make sure you hit us up. We'll, we'll be happy to help you out with that. Um, and yeah, and now we'll have a, a nice new beautiful video to put up on YouTube and Twitch uh, for this stream. So in our spooky yeah. lighting settings. Yes. This is our, <laughs> our spooky stream room. Spooky stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thank you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for joining us. See you next week. See you guys. Or this week. Yeah. See you this week. <laughs> Bye.